As card fighters, the most basic goal we set in this journey is to win. That's it. We'll win the low stakes game so we can win the high stakes game. In the anime, it's how you make someone do something, emphasize your ideals, and prove your detractors wrong. It literally decided the fate of the world. Yeah, it's a stretch and unrealistic, but you get the point. We want to win. Among others, winning will give us a sense of accomplishment, boost of confidence, as well as rewards and recognition from our fellow players. Winning sounds so easy, but it requires a combination of knowledge, strategy, skill, and luck. It starts with researching the best strategies, cards, combinations, and even more effective strategies, basically getting enough knowledge so you'll be able to predict what's coming and then doing something about it. Either play the most effective strategy available or use a deck nobody will see coming. It takes a lot of effort and time to become a master card fighter, but it all pays off once you start racking up the wins. In this video, I'll teach you how to win every card fight you'll ever play. It's a strategy that you may have heard from others before, but it's because this strategy works. That's why a lot of creators, including myself, recommend it. Now, because I love you, I will not stall any longer. Number one, make friends. TCGs like Vanguard open up doors to make new friendships. Professionally, we call this growing your network. Getting to know people with similar interests is a good thing. But how does it help you win games? Well, if your opponent is your friend, you can just casually ask them to surrender before you start the game. You can tell them that it will save both of you lots of time by not playing a game that you'll win anyway. Wouldn't hurt to ask, right? It's best to ask at the start of the game because it's rude to interrupt or distract your opponent when you're already playing. The idea is to be kind and respectful to your opponent, so ask them to surrender as politely as you can. If you're lucky, you can cakewalk a whole tournament without ever having to fight. Number two, bribery. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. If your kind words did not work, then use a more persuasive language everyone understands. Money. In the words of the great million dollar man, everybody's got a price. If your opponent is not accepting your bribes, it simply means you're not using enough of it. The pride and joy of winning a major vanguard tournament is worth every penny you'll spend. Bribe the opponents and judges. With all the money you have, you can organize your own tournament and have it fixed, so you'll win. In the words of family man Dominic Toretto, It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Number three, learn card magic. Shin Lim and Matt Franco are two of the most popular card magicians in the world. They can literally change the face of any card by shaking them. This skill alone will help you get the cards you want. Missing a key piece? Shake it into whatever card you need. Grade 3 missing? Shake that fucker to get your ideal ride. Your trigger check is dry? Think again, my friend. They can also make cards disappear. Use it so your opponent can't guard the attacks because they have no hand cards or retire their units for free. You can kick it up a notch by making the deck disappear so they lose by deck out. But it's significantly more difficult to make a bunch of cards disappear. This is just the surface of it. They can lift cards, tear them up and build them back up or teleport them. The possibilities are endless. If you learn to do card magic, then you'll have the whole game wired towards your favor. I forgot to mention they also eat the cards, so... Yeah, if you ever get hungry, I guess. Finally, consider pawning your soul to divine beings. Messiah, Gize, King Kai, the Soul King, the Atsutsuki, Sun God Nika, Koenma, Arceus, Giratina... Regardless of your affiliation or which supernatural entity you believe in, consider pawning your soul or part of it to them in exchange for a great power to win a children's card game. I don't think they'll drive a hard bargain. To be technical, it's pawning and not selling. You'll declare an intention of getting it back. I know reading is hard, but it is important that you read the fine print before signing any contracts that may potentially imprison your soul for all eternity. And that's it, my friends. Easy steps to win every card fight you'll ever play. Just in case someone would actually offer their soul to a divine being, I'll have to confess that this is satirical and not meant to be taken seriously. So if you accidentally sell your soul to the devil and not pawn it like I told you to, I will not be liable for any damage. Happy April Fools, bitches.